We have officially hit 15k. That's right, we have hit 15k, which you may think is a good thing because my channel is more in the algorithm, but actually that means that I have to answer all of your awful Omegaverse questions, so is it really a lose or a win? I did not expect to get this far and I haven't made an Omegaverse video in a while, so soon I'm going to be asking you guys to tell me all of your Omegaverse questions, any of them, all of them. So in the meantime, remember that I have the super cool awesome membership tier for $3 that you should join if you want to be a cool person, a certified cool person, certified baddie, and also, I'm going to be starting a Patreon soon. Mm-hmm. That you should join if you want behind the scenes content, blooper content, vote on polls to shape the future of purgatory, everything. Everything. But now let's buckle in for a little bit more serious video while I'm currently in the midst of filming a longer video. It's on that book. It's on that book that you would know if you follow my socials or uh, membership tier. But really, thank you guys for the 15k. I really, really appreciate it. That's so awesome of you guys. And someone else has something to say. Hey guys, Jesus H. Christ, thank you so much for the 15k so that this loser can stop begging for subscribers. All I do is yap, yap, yap about it. And don't worry, I will be in more videos to come. I know that's what you want. Why can't you ever be normal? Why can't you serve cunt? Enjoy, Enjoy the, the video. video. Hey guys, welcome to Purgatory. Purgatory. If you know me, you know I've been in the fanfic space since I was eight, so I very much understand fandom. And I don't think I'm old, but maybe I am to these people, so by the way, I'm 24. But that's not the only kind of fandom that exists, of course. In fact, fandom stems deeper than I think we probably even know. Because, in a way, we're all in fandom now, no matter how old. This discourse happens about once a year, mostly on Twitter, but now that it's happening again, I think we need to consider everything inside of it, because this can very genuinely be harmful. This is the most recent start to the discourse this year. My current most boomer take is that millennials really did ruin a lot of things. The worst thing they did was validating being part of a fandom in your 30s and 40s as normal and not something to be ashamed of. There's nothing wrong with being in fandoms when you're a teenager or when you're early into adulthood, but if you're 30 years old and you haven't found a community based on meaningful connections to each other outside of the kids shows you all watch, then I'm afraid you're not going to make it. To be clear, I'm not saying you should grow out of liking the stuff you like. Definitely continue to enjoy it and share it with your friends and loved ones. Just please grow out of engaging in online fandoms like managing subreddits, running a stan account, or being a Discord admin. There's a lot to unpack here, so I'm going to do my best to cover all of it. First off, what is fandom? The state or condition of being a fan of someone or something. Or, the fans of a particular person, team, fictional series, etc. regarded collectively as a community or subculture. By this definition, you can connect the dots to how many things the word fandom covers in society. Fandom is fanfiction. It's football. It's being a show animator. It's being a celebrity fan. It's having a film Twitter account. With that covered, let's move on to the generation war part. Gen X, Millennials, Gen Z, and Gen Alpha are all at each other's throats. Because it is unfortunately very common for the older generations to talk down onto the next. Just as it is the reverse. Because the older generation feels threatened by their youth, and the younger generation feels under attack. Because kids are not treated as human beings, they're treated as servants to kick out at 18. Can I really blame any young children for attacking the older generation? No, not really. But I can blame the adults bullying children, and also Gen X who raised millennials and Gen Z, for starting a cringe war with said generations because they have a lack of control and power in their lives and they feel that they deserve better. So they're putting 500 filters on their faces and saying that we better watch out because they don't play around and they're gonna... This person says that millennials have ruined a lot of things. Very vague. But the main example here was that the worst thing that they did was validate being part of a fandom in your 30s and 40s as normal and not something to be ashamed of. This is typical blaming of the previous generation, as all youngers do, without looking into the nuance of the situation and the reasons why. That aside, the last part, as if being in fandom in your 30s and 40s is normal and not something to be ashamed of. This is typical fandom shaming. Millennials, those before them, and Gen Z have been fighting for a very long time to get fanfiction and fandom to be something that's taken seriously and not looked down upon. But it's always frowned upon, because when we think of the word fandom, we think women. That's why fanfiction is, and was especially, so looked down upon, because it's especially woman-dominated, and it's something that makes them happy. Something that men, and many other women, hate. While fandom has always been around, women popularized and normalized it. Many, many forms of art would not exist as they do if it weren't for women. Why is this, though? Well, for the reason that most of us engage in fandom these days. Escapism. 
Reading books is seen as a mostly feminine thing, so mostly women read, and also women are more likely to want education as well as be open about wanting escapism. Once romantic and smutty books started becoming a possibility, women took it by storm because they get to live through these fictional characters living a life that they cannot. Why is it always romance? Well, misogyny. Misogyny is in everything and controls every single thing that we do. It is in every crevice of this world. And what do we do to cope with things that hurt? We escape. We read books with loving, charming men in a world with dangerous, misogynistic ones. This is not to hate on men, okay? You know the stats. And then there's the smut, but that's a whole video in and of itself. The point is, fandom is as popular as it is because of women. It would exist without them, but not in the same way. The word itself is associated with women. Think of the word fangirl. Why is it always fangirling? Why isn't there a word for men or just an all-encompassing word for everyone? Fandom is everything. If you like anime, football, art, a celeb, music, anything, you are a fan. And if you consume or create anything in real life or online about it, you are in fandom. Yes, football dude bros are in fandom. What makes it really interesting is that women are made fun of and bullied no matter what fandom that they're in. But men's favorite football team loses and they set fires and beat their wives over it. Anyways, fandom is not only associated with women, it's with young women. Teenage girls in early 20s, hence why when someone says fanfic or fandom, someone pictures a teenage girl twirling her hair, kicking her feet, writing fanfiction about her and Harry Styles. Despite the facts of what fandom is, it is associated with youth. So if you're doing something considered for kids as an adult, society looks down on you because adults have to be miserable and sad, I guess. The putting down of adults for enjoying childlike things that hurt genuinely no one is absolutely out of control, but again, another video. If you are an adult, the current youth expect you to be above it all. You should know better. You're old. You're acting like a child, but you're an adult. That's cringe. Because they don't understand that there's never a moment where your adult brain just clicks on but that it's more like you're a child who keeps growing up physically and you're expected to act differently despite not feeling any different. As you get older, you're expected to look youthful, but act older. You're not allowed to act like a kid, but you better look like one. As I said before, this tweet and mindset is typical fandom shaming. As we just covered, fandom is associated with women and youth. Therefore, it's already seen as lesser. Now factor in how we associate books with intelligence, despite there being thousands of different kinds of books. And this is why fanfiction is seen as below books. I have a more in-depth video on this coming out hopefully soon. And since fandom is associated with women, men who do participate in fandom don't see it as such because that's a woman thing. Therefore, fandom is an L. Fanfiction is an L because women are an L. Women, and now just people in general, are still fighting to have fanfiction be something that's taken seriously and not something that 12-year-old girls use to just write about One Direction with. Again, women L. It's seen as so far below books and something untalented people who don't have the skill to write anything actually good enough to be published create instead of what it is. The same thing as books. They're just words written or typed down by a person and published for the world to see. So that falls right in with the end of the first tweet. The worst thing they did was validate being part of a fandom in your 30s and 40s as normal and not something to be ashamed of. What's shameful? What is there to be ashamed of? It's cringy, it's childish, it's immature. Okay, but why are they these things to you? Why is it cringy? Why is it childish? It's cringy because it's childish and it's childish because children participate in it? So are children not people and are we supposed to forget every thought we've had and everything that we ever enjoyed as a child the second we hit 18? Or is it 19 or 20? And if it's childish because children do it, what about men enjoying a sport and going to games? I'm just talking about certain fandoms. Well then say that. And also I just can't think of any fandom that would be shameful for enjoying as an adult. You could say that about a kid's show, but what if they love it because it reminds them of their childhood before things got bad? Or maybe they just love creating art for children and therefore that's why they're a part of the fandom. The judgment of society kills imagination, freedom, and joy. You're so worried about people finding you cringy that you don't let yourself be happy. Hence the new phrase, I may be cringe, but I'm free. Because you may not be seen as cringe, but you give up your freedom to do so and make yourself conform to others' view of what is desirable because you're afraid of being shamed. The exact same thing that you do to others. There's nothing wrong with being in fandoms when you're a teenager or when you're early into adulthood, but if you're 30 years old and you haven't found a community based on meaningful connections to each other outside of the kids' shows that you all watch, then I'm afraid that you're not gonna make it. This one actually upsets me the most. The separation that you have to have from the entire world in order to say something like this is actually very concerning. I don't know how old this person is, but this comes across as a very youthful mindset. One that lacks experience in education. 
Shaming people in their 30s and older for not having found a community based on meaningful connection to each other outside of the kids shows that you all watch is probably the most ignorant thing I've ever heard in my life. There is a lot of content explaining this, so just to sum it up, and I'm just speaking for America here, but it's not just us. We live in a system created by the higher ups to keep us weak, sick, and struggling. Because if we're suffering, then we can't fight for change and demand that they let us be happy and healthy therefore taking away everything that our suffering gives to them. They planted the seed of destruction so hard that it overgrew, and now we're making sure that it flourishes for them because we have no other choice so that they can sit back and relax and take the benefits of our pain. Why do you think it's so hard to find a job? Find a job with a livable wage. Live in a home. Have enough money to eat. Go and enjoy the outside without spending money. Get any form of health care because the system is made to make you suffer so that they thrive. You are not meant to have community because if you have community, you can come together. And if you come together, you can radicalize. And if you radicalize, you can revolt. And if you revolt, you can stop the will that gives them power. The very system in which we live is made to keep you from forming any kind of community. So to shame people for not being able to find it after only 12 years of being an adult, when there's no one to teach or guide them into doing so, is the most chronically online and ignorant thing I've ever heard in my life. Anything that brings people together and doesn't harm others should be embraced and encouraged. You are pushing the separation of people because of your own fear of being cringe and being shunned. You hurt others because you fear for yourself. No wonder you don't understand community because you've never had it. Because community thinks about what is best for all, not just you. Selfishness is the antithesis of community. Selfishness and greed has completely destroyed our planet and you think that that's still the best way to go about things? To be clear, I'm not saying that you should grow out of liking the stuff that you like. Definitely continue to enjoy it and share it with your friends and loved ones. Just please grow out of engaging in online fandoms like managing subreddits, running a stan account, or being a Discord admin. So you can still like this thing. Just don't ever talk to anyone about it online ever again because that's cringe and that's a sin. So how embarrassing of you for not finding community? Also, don't you dare try to find community doing things I don't like. You are actively helping the system. This is what they want. The only reason that this is the kind of community that we can find nowadays within like fandom and stuff like that is because that is the least dangerous form of community. They want you to enjoy and have community like this so that you don't search for other forms of community like starting a revolution. Good job for being their good little puppet. And I don't wanna be mean. I don't say this intending to be mean. It's just what's happening. They're pulling your strings to help themselves and you're going with it. If you don't like that, be open to change and being wrong. This is the exact kind of person that will say, the internet isn't real. This won't affect you in the real world. I hate to tell you this, but the internet's in the real world. The internet doesn't exist in a fantasy land. We created it in this very real world. And there is no difference between something said online and in real life. Yes, there are differences such as the body will start to crave in real life communication instead of online because we are creatures made to live in community and the internet is a very new thing meant to further isolate us. But you are still talking to a real person who exists in real life right now on the internet. The internet is just a conduit for real life people. It's the same as the fantasy argument. It's just fantasy, fiction. It can't hurt anyone. Fantasy and fiction created by and for real life people made to affect them in some way. Definitely continue to enjoy it and share it with your friends and loved ones. Just please grow out of engaging in online fandoms, like managing subreddits, running a stan account, or being a Discord admin. Okay. And never enjoy a piece of art ever again then. Because if fandom means the fans of a particular person, team, fictional series, etc. regarded collectively as a community or subculture, then the people on the creative teams of things like TV shows, movies, and games will all disappear. Who will be creating said fandoms for children to join? Without art, there is no fandom. How are you allowed to create life-changing pieces of art but not talk about it online in the age of technology. And also, what about content made for adults? Anime, shows, games made for adults. Are they seriously meant to never say a thing online about this content made specifically for them? Because that would mean that they're in a fandom and that's cringe. Trying to put a limit on what age people can consume certain types of art is limiting art itself. Obviously, besides making sure that kids view kid-friendly content. It's all freedom of speech until the speech is something you don't like. Not only are we meant to not be able to find community, but we are tortured in every single other way. Lack of food, water, 
a roof over your head, access to proper education, access to healthcare, and people have to cope somehow. As I've explained before, a coping mechanism does not equal healthy. Self-harm is also a coping mechanism. It's not healthy though. So we should always encourage healthy ways of coping with the upsetting reality that we have to endure. For many, that is fandom. Never be ashamed of the harmless things you're passionate about. I've got a job, a mortgage, and responsibilities. I've got other hobbies. But this one is so easy to engage in on the go and is safe for my disabled self to engage in heavily. Can't imagine caring if I'm cringe. That's the thing, isn't it? There's no many safe or comfortable ways for disabled people to meet new people. Being in an online fandom has really opened the doors for me. You shame others for not being able to find community in a system in which they are blocked from doing so, and then say that they better only find community under the criteria that you find acceptable, or else they should be ashamed. Ashamed. If anyone should be ashamed here, I think it's you. For hurting others for coping with their abuse via fandom that doesn't hurt anyone. Of course, if it's a fandom that hurts people, it should be talked about. I literally have been doing that with Book Talk and Colleen Hoover for... It feels like a lifetime. But that's not what you're doing. You're just being closed-minded and judgmental out of fear. Which is understandable, but not acceptable. It's beyond easy to say these things and set these limits for older people. When you're young. But you're going to be them in not too long. Would you like to be a hopeless adult with no enjoyment or enrichment, just a soulless shell made to do the higher-ups bidding? My most boomer take is that Gen Z and Gen Alpha have no freaking idea how quickly their teen years and 20s are going to pass them by. And then you'll just be a sad old person who doesn't deserve happiness or enjoyment and you just go to work because a kid on Twitter told you to. On women's side, it can be and is straight up misogyny. The push for women specifically to sacrifice all their interests and identity for their family is honestly disturbing. Notice how this conversation never happens to men. They can be fans of any age, loudly engaging with zero problem. Meanwhile, we've got self-internalized misogynistic takes like OPs that are one step away from telling women to turn off the computer and take care of the house. But also, it hurts everyone. Everyone is struggling to survive at all now, and the majority cope through some type of fandom. Taking that away is cruel and inhumane. Taking that away and then shaming them for not being able to find community? Disgusting. Diabolical. Also, you know what the funniest part about all this is to me? Because we're all being forced into poverty, most don't have the means or the funds to participate in fandom until they're older adults and the ones creating the amazing fanfics that you read and that change your life. Adults, because they've had the time to learn more about the language that they're writing in and they're able to deliver moving content. What even is the problem with older people enjoying things anyway? Because it's childish, sure, but why is it wrong for adults to enjoy things that are childish other than because they're an adult? Because that's not an answer. It seems that most of our problems just stem from a lack of desire to dig deeper into ourselves. It's not a coincidence that at the same time, the phrase, it's not that deep, became popular. Millennials aren't even the ones that created this. Why do you think fanfic exists? Do you think that millennials created fanfic? Oh, brother. It's the death of intellectualism and emotional intelligence. You say the worst things that millennials did was validate being part of a fandom in your 30s and onwards. I say the worst thing Gen Z has done is condemn people for being mortal and aging. To conclude this video, someone in the comments left this quote underneath the original tweet, and I think it ties everything up together quite well. When I became a man, I put away childish things, including the fear of childishness and the desire to be very grown up. There is always this expectation for adults to behave in certain ways that we've decided that they should, but then give them no help or support or guidance and completely ignore that being an adult in a world that wants you suffering and hurting is one of the most dangerous things to be right now. Why are we still supporting the system that wants all of us to be alone and sad? Why are we setting rules that either change nothing or change things for the worse? I urge all of you to realize that changing your mind is okay and in fact needed and necessary to being a human and to realize that it is always possible to become a better person and care for others. It's literally never too late. And there are people that want to help you become one. Not just for all of us, but for you too. Because you deserve better too. Anyways, I think that's enough of my bullshit. And by bullshit, I mean um, being a caring person that wants the world to be better. I haven't made a serious video in a while, and I'm gonna be honest, I was losing my mind. I was losing my mind. I really like my more serious videos, but I couldn't think of anything to really talk about. Um, and then also there was that, that thing that happened with the last serious video that I made was the, what was it? The over-sexualization of a starian. But I do have a lot of other, I guess, silly content planned. I almost just gave away one of my videos I'm trying to keep secret. It's not secret. It's just no one seems to realize I'm do doing a video on it. So I'm keeping it a, a, a secret. 
I guess that video is technically serious, but it's also silly. I just get serious because the book is an awful, 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 awful book. But anyways, thank you for watching. And if you got to this part of the video, comment a old person emoji, a, a young person emoji, and the eyebrow emoji. Because I said, I don't, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I just say emojis now. And as always, free Palestine and free Palestine means free everyone. Because we are not free until we are all free. If you like the video, press the like button. If you despised this video, press the like button. Because unfortunately for you and not for me, the dislike button actually doesn't exist. Make sure to subscribe if you like this video or any of my other ones, okay? Because I'm, I'm trying to build a community here. And also follow me if you want to hear me uh, just complain. And give updates on videos and stuff. But do remember to be a good person. And not a bad one. Obviously. Because it is the one rule of this kingdom. The one singular and only law of this kingdom. It's really not that hard. I know. And also remember that I will not see you, but you will see me next time. Of course, because again, that's how videos work. Yes, I will pet you. Calm down. Can you hear anything that I'm saying? Tithesis. God. Oh my god. I just captured on camera you jump scaring me in the middle of a line.